Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's an exciting day because we'll be diving into a project that will take our model railway to the next level. We'll be working on something special for the layout, a stunning back scene. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know about updates to my layout and you'll be able to follow my progress as we build the modular railway. Now that you've subscribed, let's jump into today's video. Right, so I've taken us over to the workbench, also known as the kitchen unit, where I've hastily laid out all of the things that we'll need um, to do the um, backboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take you through the items that we're going to use and then we'll crack on with the build. Okay, so let's start off with the materials. Firstly, we've got the backboard itself. It's a uh, bit of ply. It's six foot by two foot, which you know is exactly the right size really. In terms of width, should I say, you know, the, the baseboard for, you know, module one of the baseboard is six foot wide. So, you know, we've got a six foot wide backboard. I'm probably going to take a little bit off the top because the back seam that I've got is, is only nine inches. So I've probably just got a little bit too much in the height, um, but we can talk about that in a second. Strengthen the backboard. I've bought some timber. So we've got some rough sawn timber. This is 2,400 millimeters by 38 millimeters with a thickness of 15 millimeters. Now I've got two lengths of that. Hopefully that'll do us and allow us to create a stain around the outsides of the baseboard ply. And hopefully um, we'll have enough wood left over to put maybe a brace down the middle as well. That then takes me onto the scene for my backboard. I spent a considerable amount of time um, trying to find something that was just right for the area that I'm trying to model um, and also the, the time frame, you know, the, the period at which I'm trying to model as well. Um, so, you know, ideally I wanted a countryside scene and I wanted it to be quite a plain background. So, you know, rolling hills, plenty of greenery, um, you know, nice sky and setting, um, and also, um, you know, one or two rural buildings, but those rural buildings, you know, couldn't have anything too modern. Um, I also tried to make sure that the buildings were of the building material, um, that, you know, that is around Thriven, um, and therefore Thriven Junction. The back scene that I chose, um, is ID back scenes. It's the premium range and it's the hills and dales pack its reference number is p208 pack c it's three meters in two sections so um, it's 10 foot by nine inch and it's the self adhesive um, i didn't like the idea of applying the adhesive myself um, because you know knowing me i'd probably overdo it um, and then i'd end up with bubbles and and and, and all kinds of things really um, so hopefully um, this is the way to go. Okay, so the final few building materials to tell you about. I went and bought some of these brackets that um, I intend to fit um, on the baseboard and on the backboard. The idea being that I want a backboard that's um, easy to remove and doesn't require screws. And I like this idea of you know two brackets and sliding them one between the other and it just sitting on it and then you can obviously just lift it off that easy so i'm going to give that a go i'm not sure how how this is going to turn out to be honest i haven't seen anybody else do it yet uh, i'm sure there are people who have done this but i thought i'd give it a go okay so let's talk tools um i've laid out quite a few tools on the bench it's hard to believe that such a simple job can require so much stuff so I suppose electrical tools, we've got 
jigsaw, uh, which I intend to use to shorten the height of the backboard. I've got my trusty um, orbital sander, you know, which I'll use to get rid of any bits of wood that are splintered off. Ten volt drill. A driver, which yeah, um, got the battery on charge at the moment. It's always the case, isn't it? It always needs charging. I've got my drill bits for the drill. I've got a handsaw. A blood hole. You never know when you're going to need it, but you always seem to need it. Tape measure, eight meters, probably too big for this job, but um, it's one I found. And then a series of um, clamps as well to hold bits of pieces in place. So guys, that's that's all the material, all the tools. Um, you know, there's nothing more to say really about any of this. So what I'll do is I'll um, start the build. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lengths of of, of wood and we're going to cut them into uh, two six foot lengths. So I'll do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tape, uh, find six foot, uh, got a line, got a pencil, let's make our mark. Okay, there's one. I'm just going to take my saw and you know. Put a 90 degree line on that, angle on that. I can saw it. Okay, so that's one line done. Just bring the other one over. Do exactly the same. Try not to get any splinters, <laughs> um, which I just nearly did, to be honest. Okay, there's our six foot mark. And again, I'm making it six foot because that's the that's the width of the ply and the width of my baseboard. So again, just mark the line. Okay, so the next thing to do is to sew it, which I'll do now. Okay, now so. Um, we've got our mark, um, all I'm going to do now is just take it to the bottom of the bench and sew it off with a hand saw. There's our second piece that we'll leave for later, and there's our other six foot panel. But again, I'll just test that. Um, absolutely perfect. Be careful when when, when working with hand saws. Obviously, um, you know there's risk of cutting your fingers. That wasn't the most ideal setup, but you know it's allowed me to do it quickly and without getting wet. So. Yeah, just be careful when using hand saws. Cool. Right, so we've now got our two boards, one at the bottom, one to sit at the top. We just now need to decide where the top of the ply board is going to be so that we can cut off the, the excess. So the next step now is to get the scene out and to lay that out and to make sure, you know, we, we've got it exactly as we want it. And then we can also see how high it needs to be this board. Let's get this 
back board, and back to now, should I say. Oh, here we go. Okay, so that's well packaged, safe um, in, in the post. Um, protected, so I'll just put that over there. Right, okay, so we should have two, two back scenes here. Oh, I really like that. To be honest, guys, I, I've not actually looked at this before, so. Yes, that's that's really good. So I'm just going to separate them, because there is two. Um, I suppose my initial thoughts are, you know, there are one or two farm buildings on here that do look, you know, 1960s onwards, and I'm really looking at, you know, the 30s and 40s. Um, thankfully, they seem to be towards the bottom of the uh, vaccine, so hopefully uh, we can cover them over if if, if we choose to. Um, the other thing I, I, I've noticed is there's a lot of conifer plantations in, in the top left of this scene. Obviously, conifer plantations were, you know, dotted, dotted all around the UK including you know north wales uh, where we're based and you know i think i think they were the post second world war thing uh, when there was a need for timber so you know, i'm just going to go and do a little bit more research i think on on conifer plantations to make sure that you know they they were around in north wales you know in 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 the 30s and 40s um i think i think they probably will be because i seem to recall that we probably will have had the same need for timber after the First World War as well. So I'm sure it will be fine. So that's scene one. Scene two, and the idea is that these scenes obviously just sit one uh, side, you know, to one side of each other. Um, scene two has no no buildings on it in the foreground. Uh, which is great. Um, we have one or two more conifer plantations on here, but again, I don't think that's an issue. Overall, um, I'm, I'm really happy with how these have looked. They they match the environment I'm trying to model, um, so so that's really good. And you know, I think I can get away with them for my um, time period of the 1930s and 40s. Just coming back to the back scenes. Obviously, I had, a, I had a choice of two uh, for, you know, two scenes uh, that came. And I decided to go with the scene to the right here. You know, and this is the scene without any buildings um, in the foreground because, you know, I've come to the conclusion that I don't really have space on the baseboard to, to do a lot with um, landscape. And so, um, you know, it's not going to be too undulated isn't the ground um you know it's going to be relatively flat so you know there's less opportunity for me to actually cover some of those more modern buildings in in the other um, back scene on this module so yeah we'll go with the ones without any buildings in the foreground that way we don't have to hide anything you know it fits perfect with what i'm trying to model obviously guys i'm gonna save the scene that i'm not using um because you know We'll obviously be using it for uh, the next module when we get around to building it. That module, I think, is going to contain Triven Station, um, and therefore it's going to be going to have more, more um, buildings, I suppose, and, and, and things to cover um, some of those um, other things on the back scene that look a little bit more modern. Okay, so the next steps now are to mark the height of the back scene on the ply. Um, technically nine and a half inches, which Caught me off guard a little bit. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't cut it anyway. 
Um, so nine and a half inches is what we've got. So lesson learnt there. Although it says nine inches, make sure you um, make sure you check it. Uh, there is a white border around the base, um, around the back seam, uh, which to be honest, I'm probably going to leave on. So um, yeah, I'll cut it nine and a half inches. So there is a, a little a little border um, around the back seam, as you can see, top and bottom. Um, so you know, obviously that's why it's nine and a half inches, not nine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now mark that off at the ends. I'm probably going to cut it ten and a half inches, um, and that way it can, you know, I've got a little bit of a lip then. Um, Now we can get start to get an idea of how we're going to fit these battens. You know, so we'll have, we'll have it looking like that, and then we'll use you know some of the offcuts that we had from earlier just to strengthen the frame. So we'll have a piece either side. And then we'll use the excess just to put a few braces then in in and amongst the you know, the length of the fly. Right guys, so all I've done is put one of those battens across. I've offset it from the line that we're gonna cut um, so that you know the jigsaw will um, slide down the batten and cut exactly where we need it cutting. I'm holding it in place with two clamps. Hopefully they'll be sufficient and and you know this is just gonna go as easy as it possibly can do. I'm gonna use jigsaw on the lowest setting. I'm I am worried about holding it all, I have to admit. Um, I am struggling to find stuff to support it on. So that's that's been a real success. I'm really happy with that. I've just give it a quick look over, made sure you know it's the right right um, height on either end and in the middle, um, and and that is the case. So you know, real success. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it round now because I want the uh, bit that we've just cut to be the bottom so that you don't see it. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll turn it round. So that we've got the um, you know the, the 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 end that was cut by the supplier at the top, which you know they've probably done a better job than me, only just. But still, we'll we'll do that. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give it a bit of a sand, I suppose. So um, let's find the sander and let's just give this a, a quick blast.
so that's all sanded down. Got rid of all those sharp bits on the end. Although I've just caught myself on the other piece of wood. Um, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Finally, I've, I've just got a little bit of paper, sandpaper. I'm just going to give that a rub on the actual ends themselves. Fantastic, so that's all now sanded and um, smooth. That's 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 good news. Now we just need to fit the frames in place. Now I suppose we need to we need to put the screws in from the other side. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna decide which side I want the back to be. Probably going to be the underside. I'm going to position the board in the corner and in the corner at that side as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold them in place. So you can't see this off camera a little bit, but I'm just going to use one of those clamps clamp that exactly where I want it and then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side as well just move it a little bit so I can get the clamp in okay so let's get our clamp on there watching our fingers um, and you know that's now ready to drill into so that's the next step. I'm, I'm going to just get the drill bit set up in the drill and find some screws uh, that are um, just long enough but don't go through the, the piece of wood, and then we'll we'll crack on. Right, guys, I think we're ready. Just armed the drill with the um, a very small drill bit, just to give me a pilot hole. Um, going to retrieve the battery for the driver. And also found some small screws, which to be honest, you can't really see, but they're small enough to go through uh, the ply into the rough sawn wood, but not all the way through. So, you know, they, they should be fine. I don't know how many I'm going to put in this at the bottom at this moment in time. I think I'm probably going to put four in evenly spaced. But I'm just going to drill my first pilot hole. Take my screw. I haven't countersunk any of those, you know, because they, they've gone in anyway below the surface of the ply. I have to admit the first one probably was the worst, uh, the last one was the better, but you know, ultimately you can see what we're doing here, just to create a bit of strength. So I'm just going to repeat that process now for the top piece. Okay, so now that's all in place, um, I'm just going to give it a sand again because we've introduced uh, the rough sawn wood. So I just want to take the edges off of that. So that's what I'll do now for a couple of minutes.
I'm really happy, guys, with how this is going so far. I, you know, got both the top and bottom battens in. We've got the ply to the correct size, and we've sanded it all down so it's now nice and easy to handle. Um, there's no sharp bits, and I'm now just looking at the back and questioning whether or not I need those struts you know those extra bits of support between the two two pieces of wood the top and the bottom piece and to be honest i think it's probably enough as it is it's 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 strong you know it's it's, it's not weak um you know it's not a very big piece anyway you know the the the, the weakness i suppose was a long span but you know that's where we've got the wood the buttons so terms of height there is no real weakness um, I'm also conscious that if I add any more pieces of wood to it then it becomes heavier um, you know and and ultimately I want this to be as light as possible because I obviously want it to be portable and the other thing I suppose is I don't want to put too much pressure um, on these on these joints we'll I think we'll we'll leave it without for now and and see how we get on we can always strengthen it i suppose at um, a later date so the next task now is to have a look at how we go about fitting these brackets and um, so obviously we have to fit some to this that we've just done the the, the, the back seam board and then obviously we're going to have to fit some to the frame of the baseboard as well. And again, as I said earlier, the idea is that, you know, this is the, if this is the backboard with the back scene on, and this is the frame of the baseboard, you know, the idea is they're fitted to either one of those. And then the idea is that they slot in and, you know, are held then securely. On the, on the metal bracket in theory that sounds great doesn't it because that means then i can just lift the back seam and the back seam board off of the baseboard relatively easily so guys i've just decided to tidy up the workspace get rid of all the dust and because i think before we actually fit the brackets we're gonna have to put the back seam on the board that way then the brackets can sit on top of the actual printed seam and i'm not trying to cut around them at a later date if i do decide to apply the black back seam later on so whilst i'm tidying up i thought i'd just move the board out away and put it in its uh, rightful position to show you what that looks like so you know here it is on on the actual layout you know so just zoom out a little bit as you see it fits perfectly end to end you know the full six foot of the board at the moment it's just sat on the you know, the frame that i put on there but as you can see you know we're gonna have a, a nice fit and you know the idea being that you know somehow now we're gonna work it out to put the brackets on you know the outside of this down here and ultimately you know the other bracket on on this piece of wood but you know on the other side there so hopefully you'll agree that that's coming together rather well might as well just touch upon what's on the layout at this moment in time so we've got um a4 mallard that's that only came yesterday actually which i enjoyed playing with last night We've got a 4F, which I put a decoder in last night. Unfortunately, I damaged the clip on the tender. So I need to look at how I'm going to fix that. And then we've got a Batman Class 56. They're the three locals currently on the layout that I was having a bit of a play with last night. 
Right, so first thing I think we're going to do then, before we stick the vaccine to the back board, is we're going to cut off this uh, margin on the right here. So the vaccine uh, that I've got has a small margin, you know, and obviously I want the vaccine to butt right up against the edge of the backboard. Um, so, you know, when we put the next module down and we've got the next backboard um, and the next back scene, you know, we, we, we want them to be continuous. I'm going to just draw, take this bit off. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've just got that one of those um, off cuts of wood. The next thing to do now is just to make sure I get it lined up right with the margin. And then I'm just going to take the scalpel and um, cut it off. Like so. Great. So there's the margin gun. And that now allows me to have a have have the vaccine uh, completely flush. As I mentioned earlier, you know, this vaccine does have a margin at the top and bottom. But I'm gonna leave those on because I don't mind it to be honest. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the vaccine is at the top, um, is, is flush against the top as well as the side and there's going to be a bit of an overhang at the bottom and that's because you know we're, we're going to hide that and uh, that's hopefully where our brackets are going to sit at the bottom there. So the next bit we're going to peel the uh, back off of the back scene to reveal the adhesive sticky paper and then we'll start to put that down probably do it in small sections I've got a old rag just to try and get rid of the air bubbles to be honest I've been dreading this bit this is a bit I think is going to be quite difficult so let's see how it goes right, so I've just unpeeled it which was easier than I expected the next test now is to get this in the corner. What's really nice about this stuff is um, it's got a real good finish to it. It feels great, you know, and I suppose I did pay a little bit extra for the premium version, uh, which does come with, you know, the self adhesive. Now that's, that's got about 98% well I suppose you could say. Um, I have ever so slightly uh, just started to drift at the last minute. I don't think I can actually lift it back up again. You know, so I, I, I am three millimeters out at the top, unfortunately. Now as you can see there, in the top corner. Obviously, as you can tell, I've got a gap remaining at the end. You know, so we are going to have to put on the next board that I, I put away earlier, and also 
I'm going to have to take off the border at this end as well. There's a white border as we took off last time. So here we are. I've just taken the second piece out of the packet again. Just making sure that I did put it in the correct place, which is the case. I've got the right end at the right side. As you can see, I've still got this border. So next task now is just to get rid of that, which I'll do. Here we are guys on the layout. I've just temporarily put it in place just to give you you know first glimpse of what it looks like. You know that's the bit that we added on the end there. You can see the join ever so slightly. If you're not staring at the A4 that is. But yeah, I'm I'm rather happy with how that looks. Let me know what you think. Do you think it looks okay? Now right, guys, I've got three sets of these jackets. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them, you know, one on either end and then one in the middle. You know, that's, that's, that's the plan. So I'm going to set that up now. So here we are. What I've done is I've decided that I'm going to place the jacket 10 centimeters in from the end. So I've just marked that draw my line and I'm going to sit it just in the middle of that so I just need to get a measurement for how far that is from the base Here we are guys, behind the baseboard. I don't very often come behind here to be honest. But you know the idea now is that we're gonna fit the other bracket to the baseboard structure so that the vaccine boards can obviously slot in. So we're gonna put these on here. Just been having a look at whereabouts I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna probably put them towards the bottom to be honest. seems like the safest thing to do so I'm gonna just measure them in now and um, get them in the right place and then we'll take it from there
Right, guys. I've got all three on. Two end ones went on really easy. Um, the middle one was a little bit more problematic, and I've, I've had to move it twice, unfortunately. But yeah, so we've got this one, we've got the middle one, and then we've got one right at the far end of the board, too. So yeah, so that's that's the job done really. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the board in position. Hopefully it just slides straight in. And there we are guys. There's it in place. Like I say, it's literally just a pull out. And pop in. Set up. Uh, for the easy removal. I think there's one or two things left to do. I, I do want to finish the top with something that just lips over. Ever slightly, just something to, yeah, tidy up really. But other than that, I'm I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. You think it's a good idea to do it this way? And that wraps up our back seam project for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the transformation as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Your support really does mean the world to me. Stick around to the very end of the video because YouTubers pick two videos they'll think you'll love. Click on them to keep seeing my progress on the layout. As always, keep those trains on the track and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.